प्रोजेक्ट मैनेजमेंट में आपको प्रोजेक्ट टीम को लीड करना पड़ता है और आपको लोगों को मैनेज करना पड़ता है ठीक है सो so, उसके लिए आपकी लीडरशिप स्किल्स काम आती हैं द मोर यू आर गुड इन द इंटरपर्सनल स्किल्स द मोर यू कैन कम्युनिकेट वेल यू विल बी एबल टू सक्सीड इन मैनेजिंग योर प्रोजेक्ट्स बिकॉज एंड ऑफ द डे इट इज मोर of the people management theek okay. hai so we need to understand what is our leadership style and how we can best motivate the people that we lead um but there would be situations where we will be demanded of a certain leadership style like the situational leadership will be the need of the time so you want to be servant leader for whole duration of the project maybe you need to become like a directive leader at certain point in time when the stakes are high you need to take a quick decision okay so one size does not fit all it's all right so similarly one leadership style does not fit in all the situations that you may find yourself in overall if you are a leader you need to work towards your team building your team development setting them for success and identifying their areas of improvement and working on them on those areas so you develop those people into leaders so leaders make leaders okay so okay. that's important that you you inspire them you motivate them but end of the day they transform themselves into leadership so you do it through training coaching mentoring and uh, part of your job will be managing the conflicts so how well you manage your team conflicts that will be also instrumental for your project okay so when we talk about guidelines for developing your leadership and competencies and skills um so we are we need to study those various facets of leadership those various styles of leadership so we understand that what is our leadership style and how we can become a better leader now both in person and virtually so it demands like the need of the time is that you may be leading in a virtual setting so how well you communicate across channels it doesn't matter that you are speaking with people audience right in front of you or they are distributed virtually distributed audience now the more you communicate the more the better you communicate more assertive you are it will be better for your projects to succeed we'll be talking about uh, various uh, other topics like how you empower your team to make their local decisions themselves um plus when you communicate how how what are the means of communication what are the methods of communication what are the modes of communication various strategies in various environments plus we need to understand if there are any training or coaching needs then you need to identify over the period of time you will grow your people right exactly so so if you will grow your people you need to identify which areas they need to be which areas you need to grow them then you can work towards mentoring coaching training so first you need to identify the training need analysis what are the training needs of your team and uh, we'll be talking about how uh, many ways are there to resolve a conflict and uh, the techniques of conflict management and conflicts are 
normally uh, there are levels of conflicts like conflicts conflicts start at argument level then they escalate to the uh, more advanced level where there is sometimes no way back and the teams are at far end of each other like they they become as they, it becomes as a war so we need to understand how conflict escalates to various levels and why and how we can bring it down to the normal level let's begin these areas so craft your leadership skills such as power skills power skills mean your communication your inspiration your convincing ability all those skills that you can ex uh, exercise on the people the way you inspire them the way you motivate them the way you convince them to do the job at hand that will be instrumental that will be your skill that will be your charisma that will be your your way your way it is your way that how you convince them to do the task which looks like not an easy ask it gonna demand some level of understanding of your emotions other person emotions emotional intelligence empathy so without these things you won't be able to lead you have to be empathetic you have to be empathetic without empathy you without understanding your own feelings and other people feeling you won't be able to lead them inspire them motivate them so it's all about how well you sense how well you control your own emotions how well you control the people um emotions their feelings and then use these feelings to um in a positive direction what are those power skills the power skills include the way you collaborate with people communicate with people the way uh, the 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 alternatives that you find the innovative the creativity the innovative um, ideas that you have okay and um, how well you influence people or other stakeholders that you work with now inclusive leadership inclusive leadership like we want everyone to be taken care of we need to include diverse group of people in our decision making um it's like including everyone it won't be uh, possible to make decisions in this kind of leadership style that uh, you won't be able to make quick decisions but <clears throat> you would at least consult Uh, understand other people and more and more you will read about leadership and competencies you will understand that there are many aspects of it <clears throat> so we talked about two basic things like you should have emotional intelligence you should have empathy you should have uh, understanding of your own leadership style and the situation that what does the situation demand does it demand any particular leadership style then you need to uh, show demonstrate that particular leadership style but there will be certain values that you will be adhering to those values such as you should be transparent in and out in terms of the team and you appreciate transparency if there is a delay there is a delay we should not hide it so you appreciate the transparency that the team has a feeling of no fear they should not fear about their mistakes if they have done the mistake there is nothing to be uh, worried what do you say what do you think yes actually everything we are considering to keep is inclusive leadership so definitely the motivation will be there empathy leadership style 
even the external resources so to the point of uh, the chance of worryness or that uh, to to miss something will be very less so that will be our uh, inclusive leadership style and its competencies right so when it comes to your leadership skills and competencies as i said that emotional intelligence is just one aspect of it we talk uh, about uh, conflict management is another communication is another then your critical thinking so you must not accept the answer for the sake of an answer you should ask questions you should argue argue because you should be able to understand the root cause of the problems and you will not be able to reach Thank the you. root cause if you ask one question it it is not right. possible you need to ask why they say you need to ask why five times why this happened and then if the reason is unfolded then you ask why this happened then you need to dig deep it's not easy but it is one of the leadership um, qualities or skill that you should be critically analyzing thinking right normally whatever you see is not the reason or justification there should be proper okay. reason for everything argument so you... discussion yes. yes the brainstorming or something so yes. the idea yes to make it more critical yes yes and you see we we have a lot of competencies like facilitation meeting management so the way you facilitate the discussions and you reach to some actions this is also a skill in being a pm you should have this skill that you should be a good facilitator and you should you should come out of the meetings with some actions clear actions and this can only happen if you facilitate the meeting stick to the agenda share the agenda before and have some objectivity in the meeting right exactly then you have negotiation a lot of the times in project management you will need to negotiate every day you need to negotiate with your team members about their work you need to negotiate team uh, resources with the other uh, project managers or functional managers even you need to negotiate the pricing sometime timing sometime so that you should be able to find a win win situation in all those situations the negotiation is key skill mm -hmm. you can get uh, job done quickly you can get job done in less amount of uh, resources or money or so negotiation is the key and a lot of the times you will find your network really helpful so they say that your network net worth or your they say your network is your net worth right exactly exactly have you heard this what do you really what do you oh, sorry have you heard about your net worth is your network the net worth because uh, see if you are surrounded by the intellectual so definitely you will be having a as uh, you will be having a, a, a good communication because they are intellectuals uh, affiliated people be in will be and in your leadership style and uh, inside your personality then just the people or the number of people uh, you are just adding into that one so they will be having more worth in your working style 
uh, because uh, ultimately if they are growing being the part of that network you are also mm -hmm. growing so what is uh, this will uh, add the value and the worth uh, in every we are in term of conflict management communication management critical thinking uh, maybe some expert judgment that we need to give so that uh, that is uh, very well said that uh, the network is your net worth actually sure. Sure. then when you have a team you need to find out uh, number of ways how you can make team building. I mean, team should be a team, not a group of individuals. So it is okay. very important that you form the team building activities from time to time. Uh, you can go for group dinners or group exercises, group assignments, something that we let that make some people do the job together, you know also oh. some team games so it should be important that we 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 connect at personal level also then we will become better as a team right exactly once we will not understand each other at personal level or at emotional level then the bond inside the team you want it will not be strong uh, maybe we will not feel more close while working together also. So mm -hmm. that is necessary to, to get uh, uh, in touch in some extracurriculum activities kind of things, uh, even other than uh, working environment also. Yeah. <clears throat> so that will help to build a strong team. Yeah. Uh, that will be emotionally attached, which will be more focused, uh, yeah. which will be more attached, and which will, will be more uh, transparent and clear about the things actually. Also, if you are working in cross-cultural environment, so you need to be culturally aware that what are the speci specialities of each culture. You need to take care about cultural sensitivities, what to talk, what not to talk, how to behave, how to greet, how to uh, you know, specific cultures have specific norms. Okay, so oh. culture means many things. It may be politics, it may involve religion, it may involve a lot of ways of living, right? So we need to be oh. aware about all the people, diverse group of people that we work with, what are their cultural backgrounds. So we should be sensitive to those things and be careful about those things. So that each one feel like culturally inclusive. Like I, everyone feels like part of a team. Right, exactly. Yeah. Okay. So some of those skills are your interpersonal skills. Uh, and team skills, which is demanded from everybody. Like it's not the PM, but everyone has to have active listening skill. Everyone should have uh, emotional intelligence, like understanding uh, emotions of ourselves and others. So as also influencing skills, like we should be able to understand the urgency we should be able to influence and uh, cascade this urgency to the other people whom we work with. So sense of responsibility, sense of, and also motivation that if you are self-motivated, that's the best thing because the work feel like exciting. The work has some, some, uh, there is motivation in the work for you. You are learning something. This is something, a challenging project or challenging assignment or maybe other motivating factors are there. You feel like working on a project that will teach you a lot of new skills. You will be promoted. You have a career path. So a lot of motivations, intrinsic or extrinsic, you would have. It can be financial. It can be career-related um, when we are working with uh, 
people. So we need to decide and uh, make decisions. And we, we can use various other techniques which involve group decision making, such as nominal group uh, technique. Nominal group make, uh, technique is one of the technique where we can reach to the decision based on uh, group feedback, taking consideration of group uh, opinion. Okay. And uh, yeah, <clears throat> all in all, uh, we talked about that uh, our values in our values, we are transparent, so we can we can think of uh, uh, others also transparent. We should promote transparency, political awareness as well. So these are various aspects of a team. Where when we work as a team, we should be aware about um, the the these areas. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> so as I said, that uh, one size does not fit all. So you need to adapt leadership styles based on the situation that you are in. Maybe in the pro start of the project, you are, you need to be more like a directive leader because you should show the path. Once people are on the right path, then you just need to adapt, adapt to the inclusive leadership or servant leadership so or consultative leadership. So it depends that in which phase of the project you are. Once things are, uh, stakes are, I, then you need to make quick decision. Then you won't be able to reach the consensus. Then you need to, you might need to use the the directive leadership style that one man decides on the behalf of the group. It could be it could be one of the possibility that you need to take quick decisions because consultation or these things take time. Yeah. So there are various modes of leadership. Direct leadership is like uh, you are using your hierarchy, like you are PM, that's why you are you are the boss. Yeah, so that means that you are uh, directing all the team members using your authority, your hierarchy. Uh, consultative leader means that you will take opinions and then you make decision and it will take time, but it will be satisfying. Everybody will be feeling uh, accommodated and uh, consultation will increase the collaboration and ownership in the end. Servant leader set up other people for success and they uh, put others' feelings, others' uh, requirements uh, on top of their own requirements. I mean, uh, they model uh, what they want from their team so they demonstrate those qualities, those um those uh, values uh, that they want to see in their team members consensus or collaborative leaders uh, uh, or the teams or the teams they operate uh, autonomously okay which means that uh, yeah there is there is a collaboration there is joint ownership and uh, there is a lot of uh, autonomy between the team yeah, uh, the way they they take uh, collaborative decisions, so they they make them they feel themselves they are empowered as well. Situational leadership demands. Uh, uh, I mean, you you need to fit to the context, uh, whatever is uh, the situation. You need to adapt your leadership style according to the situation. Now, how you tailor your leadership style depends on various factors such as what type of project it is and how much experience you have with this kind of project uh, do you have experienced team members uh, what is their maturity level and which organization you are working in is it uh, projectized or purely functional um, and then uh, you are you co-located or virtually distributed so it also matters that which style you should be using okay what is the difference between leadership and management surely these are two different things not an equal leadership is not equal to management so management is more like using your hierarch hierarchical position directing people based on your 
uh, based on your authority and then you prescribe some behaviors and then you let others follow uh, follow those behaviors. But leadership is through inspiration, exchanging of ideas, discussion, you motivate, you inspire, you guide, you set up others for success, you make leaders, managers make followers. So, yeah. So this is the uh, this is the great topic that we've been studying in all the management courses. That what makes a leader a leader, and uh, what set apart a leader from the manager, right? So leader will say that let's do it, let's do it together. So manager will say that do it, yeah. So he will say like get it done. I want to, I want you to finish it. That's it. I don't know. So there's no collaboration. There is nothing, but there is no empathy sometimes. But leader has an empathy. Leader has an empathy. <clears throat> and uh, yeah, managers will think that you just, you are not a motivated individual. Or maybe leaders give value to your, your unique qualities, your unique leadership, uh, your 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 values, the way you work, they will appreciate and they will get the things done also, but they will appreciate and get the things done in their own way. Um, and you will feel like working for leaders, uh, don't you? Definitely, definitely. The leadership style matters always. So if it is a kind of manager, so definitely the orders will be there always and we have to listen and follow but but the leader will support in all ways including the discussion feedback exchange of ideas yeah with the leader you will not feel like if you fail what will happen yeah definitely there there will be no blame game there will be no punishment instead uh, there will be a encouragement there will and be a mentoring uh, there will be a learning, there will be a good experience, uh, there will be a motivation, there will be a positive feedback, uh, there will be a lesson how to improve, how to how to get the lesson also. So a lot of things uh, under leadership, uh, uh, even the team member can get, but under management there will be a punishment, there will be a blame, there will be a demotivation, uh, there will be a down uh, downward uh you know uh down they, they appreciate certain behaviors and they discourage certain behaviors right exactly. so if you want to become a leader if you want to become a leader in front of a manager you will be discouraged who are you definitely job. definitely he will say i am the boss what you are trying to say don't say it or maybe they will limit the speaking uh, ability of the person or something so a lot of things are there that the leadership follow, but the management or manager uh, is not going to follow. So there is strong emphasis on uh, in agile for a servant leader. So servant leader is someone who set up other people for success and uh, he facilitates them, he guides them, trains them, coaches them, mentors them, and uh, empowers them. All of these uh, are the areas where he helps his team. But end of the day, uh, he's there for his team when they need him. Uh, in all aspects, he will be helpful, um, even if someone he is not well trained enough. He will take care of his training needs. If someone is facing certain impediment to get the job done, he will come and uh, help to resolve the impediment. Whatever it is blocker, he will re remove the blocker. So he is there always to jump into uh, into your help wherever you are struck with, and also if you have some dependencies then he might be able to help you in all aspects he's there to set you up for success so that you can focus on your work and rest all the 
things he can take care of for you. Yeah. So he is kind of a servant for his team. Well, <clears throat> adapt our growth mindset. So what is growth mindset? So growth mindset is, is a learning mindset that you look at the past experiences and you learn and you take this forward. I mean, as a guidance for you, whatever you have uh, experienced in the previous projects, you take these lessons and then you move forward to the new projects, but you do not do those old mistakes. You do new mistakes. You are not afraid of doing the mistakes. Uh, this is how we learn. We, we, we fail fast. We say we fail fast. Why? We say we fail fast because we don't want to fail later. We want to fail now so that we learn some lesson and then we can correct ourselves in time. This is how we continuously improve. Because we iterate on our ideas, we improve those ideas, uh, we make prototypes, we, 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 we review our prototypes, we see what worked, we see what needs to be changed, then we change our approaches. So we adapt with the feedback, we improve our product, we evolve based on the feedback. So yeah, so that's how a growth mindset is that is always on the path to improve. There is always some learning see if you compare yourself like a month ago two months ago you will find yourself that you have grown in terms of the number of uh, um, the number of experiences you had the, the more the people that you interacted with the more the projects that you have completed or the tasks that you have completed you will feel like like there is a growth there is a growth right what do you say? Definitely, definitely. Uh, so definitely there is a growth. Uh, and the guidance, even the continuous improvement are best approach to discussion Definitely all these things are going to contribute with the growth mindset. When somebody knows, yeah, there is a good guidance, there is a lot of opportunity ahead. So definitely as a leader, even these things also apply on a leader as well to, to give, uh, give a chance to all the people also. Hmm. Now, as I said that once you uh, have a team, so you will take care about their team building and uh, it can be done through time from time to time, uh, bringing people um, in groups, let them work in groups on the assignments or uh, some games, uh, outdoor activities, uh, dinners, whatever exercise that you can put them to or do it together. So the way they collaborate, uh, this brings the cohesion and bindingness in the team. So they support each other. They will give a hand uh, to get the job done to each other. So it will bring them close and then this closeness will really, really help them in their day-to-day -day work that they do. Or you can do it in a formal setting or you can do it in an informal setting. You can do it for short period of time or long period of time, uh, but it is must. No matter what way you uh, do it, it will build uh, the trust level. It will build the cohesion, unity, empathy, feeling for each other, care for each other, and that's that's how we we manage to bring people close and get the things done. Because in the end of the day, nothing can be done alone. It's always a teamwork, right? Agree? Yeah, definitely. There is a teamwork. Ultimately, there is a result of each activity, each job. 
so if there is a teamwork definitely the results will be positive and everybody will be happy also but if something is not there like in terms of team building there is the improper team building or dis dissatisfaction among the team member even the solidarity will not be there uh, the leadership and the bond between leader and the team member will not be there you have any example so all examples are always there because uh, in our daily routine we we are uh, facing uh, uh, most of the time this situation in term of like uh, recently recently uh, we were doing one of our construction project uh, where we need to establish some initial uh, budgeted requirement in our company for a new tower actually so uh, there was a, a liberty a, among the team members to say and discuss about uh, uh, the most of the things technically with the technical engineers. So, and uh, they coordinated well with the one finance team and procurement team uh, to give them the correct idea about, about the technical aspect of the projects. And uh, it helps us to prepare properly a, a, a very good uh, budget report as well. Uh, and uh, the BOQ of that one. So how did it happen? You think like the team working together for years and years actually uh, uh, Actually most of the time most of the time uh, we are staying over a long period uh, but we are not happy like uh, we are staying with wife and we are not happy since long we have also 5, 6, 10 children also uh, uh, sometime we are meeting a new person and within a day uh, we are becoming a good friend of him or her. So it's depend on the environment, how 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 good environment you are going to get actually. Uh, even staying over a period, uh, maybe the good environment will not be established. But that's depend on the behavior of uh, the team member, uh, the seniors, uh, overall the top management, how they are going to share the responsibility. If there is a decentralized uh, structure, or uh, the people are independent and working autom autonomously, uh, then maybe they will be, if they will feel more trusted and uh, more independent, I think that will also create more bond between the team, yeah. uh, between the management, yeah. even the team member. No supervision is there always, even working over the period like more than 10, 20 years. Uh, due to that uh, close uh, supervision approach, yeah. investigation, or questioning mind, definitely that environment will never establish. Yeah. Uh, like mm -hmm. uh, the environment between wife and the husband whenever he is coming late from the uh, office. <laughs> so there is always a question. Yeah. All right. So um, uh, just like uh, we are discussing, so there was there was uh, Bruce. Turkmen, uh, a psychologist, he studied and he gave this model of team formation and we talked about it multiple times in the <clears throat> in the questions we have seen. So it's, he says that uh, all the teams pass through this these phases. Okay, once uh, you form a team, you bring people together from various uh, departments, various walks of life, and they 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 form a team so they form they go through a forming stage okay uh, so the the moment they uh, they leave the forming stage and then they start working together uh, there will be conflicts that will arise uh, somehow people will challenge uh, authority people will challenge each other ideas uh, they the conflicts will uh, arise between the understanding of definitely right yeah so they will start to storm each other um, who is who i am who you are who like that um so we will see some noise um so now the leader what should you do as a leader so what should your behavior should be when the team is storming so here your conflict management skills come in 
like the way you manage the conflict, try to resolve it, avoid it, smooth it, facilitate it, collaborate. So leader will be busy in doing all these things so that team, end of the day, they, they feel like, okay, uh, let's park the conflict, maybe let's agree on whatever we agree, or maybe we collaborate and resolve the conflict so that the root cause can be addressed. <clears throat> so um, then we 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 feel like uh, uh, in uh, working terms with each other, once we feel like we are at working terms with each other and we begin to normalize, so this stage is called norming, that we, we are starting um, starting uh, over and we, we agree uh, with each other on certain aspects. We agree to disagree, but we are moving ahead in, uh, <clears throat> in, in harmony. And this is the start of some positive vibes that you will feel like, thank you. Okay, I accept the other people feeling as well. And I accept they, they accept my feelings as well. And then we start to produce some results. Now, now various teams uh, end at this stage, like maybe at previous stage of storming, or maybe they reach to the norming stage. Hardly the teams reach to the performing stage, which is where they, the op productivity is optimized and each team member actually compensate the other team member. So if you are not there, uh, someone will take up your work and get the things done <clears throat> so that he compliments uh, you. Uh, those performing teams, they communicate freely. There is no leg pulling. There is no blame gaming. And they solve their conflicts. Conflicts does arise, but uh, it becomes very easy uh, while collaborating and resolving the technical conflicts or emotional uh, or as well as some uh, understanding, misunderstanding. So all these things are easily resolved because team collaborates. There is a uh, free... Um, they communicate freely and there is productivity and there is support for each other and respect for each other, trust for each other. Then as projects terminate, so as the teams also adjourn, so once you have achieved the project objectives, completed your work assigned to you, so you shift to the next mm -hmm. project or the next phase of the project. So teams dis disperse. So they rejoice, they celebrate whatever they have achieved. And then this is again to say goodbye to each other. So that's, so then the team adjourns. So this is the last phase when uh, the teams uh, leave each other. So forming project manager has to explain the team what is their role. Storming, he has to resolve the conflicts. Norming, uh, he has to leave them uh, to, 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 to work freely, autonomously. Performing, uh, he has much less to do because team will resolve their conflict on their own. They collaborate well. And adjourning is like celebration. When you celebrate the team's success and then you say cheers, goodbye, see you in the other part. Okay. Now... <clears throat> Sometimes uh, uh, not every situation is not every situation is uh, um, urgent or important. So we need to stick, find a balance between um, between the 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 do more kind of concept with our team, right? So we always say that okay, uh, do more, do more, do more. Then then the team team do not find it balanced, right? They, their mental or their work-life balance also get impacted. So, so how how well uh, how well we move forward is it, it all depends on that how much I load you with the responsibilities. So if I just start to load you with the responsibilities or responsibilities, then definitely you will. Uh, feel, feel overwhelmed and then you won't be able to meet my expectations, right? And uh, when there is also urgency for each and everything is urgent, 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 then, then nothing will be, you know, uh, urgent because everything will feel like like everything is urgent. So, so what can I do, right? You need to prioritize, you need to keep this uh, this word for something really urgent. So you don't need to push your team always to the extreme, right? 
exactly exactly it will create more pressure situation it will it will create a chance of mistake it will create a, a miscommunication also so so many things uh, will happen so the uh, yeah. team tune should be i think that is uh, that should promote positive interaction with uh, engaging communication or collaboration yeah. urgency is always there because sometimes the people shows urgency uh, to just uh, just show the pressure or transfer the pressure but but it will, it will not give the desired results definitely yeah sure so when we are communicating with people who are virtual who not virtual but they are at in virtual setting so we need to find various uh, communication tools are there what best work with them uh, sometimes we feel uh, uh, video communication is important so we can have video conferencing we can have zoom microsoft team um, virtual uh, communication uh, through messaging instant messaging whatever the way uh, works with the team member, what is the best way to communicate with the team member, you should find uh, from his own preferences. And this is the way that we engage with the team that is at uh, far from us, okay? Uh, and the tools are there, right tools are there, then we need to uh, empower, equip each person with that uh, tool, not only tool, but we have some ground rules that everyone should be should be also available no matter if he's in the virtual setting he should make himself available um, all the other other um, values and uh, responsibilities they also apply to the people in the virtual setting as well like uh, we want them to be available we want them to be transparent about their work they should be responsible accountable they should show that they are attentive uh, communication availability response time um, they should uh, be familiar with use of the video conferencing tools um, no matter if it is a new or old they know it they don't know it they need to adapt to the new ways of working um, maybe they have never experienced slack communication they should learn how to communicate on slack on microsoft azure on um, on jira whatever tools are there uh, yeah uh, but again we need to assess these people as well like normal people like uh, what is their participation level what is their body language their tone um, no matter if you are in virtual setting or in person setting you should not encourage certain behaviors you should not discourage certain behaviors like you need to find out uh, um like even if the person is virtually communicating he is as responsible as he is as a person who is in person available agree yes yes definitely uh virtual me it doesn't mean that uh, he will not be accountable or responsible he will be having the same status and uh, he will be doing all the responsibilities. He will be accountable and uh, definitely. Uh, yeah. And if you need to see the work status, uh, even if the team is virtually distributed, you can use the tools like the Kanban board and you can see that what are the items in progress with you. You can see even each team member, what has he's done, completed so far, what he's uh, going to do today. Uh, what are the things he has not started? What are the things he has completed? So there are tools that can actually help you to track the performance of the virtual team members. <clears throat> so virtual team members should not feel like they are isolated. You can, from time to time, you can uh, try if it is possible that they should join you in person. It will be encouraging for them. It will be encouraging for the whole team from collaboration point of view. Uh, but again, uh, commitment, uh, focus, responsibility, um, delivery, everything is as important for them as well as important for the team, which is available in person. 
So we covered various aspects of the team uh, leadership, virtual team leadership, uh, leadership styles, um, uh, how we work with distributed team members, uh, what is servant leadership, uh, what is inclusive leadership, directive leadership, collaborative leadership, inclusive leadership, and uh, what are the power skills of a PM. Um, and uh, we discussed about um, how we can be more responsible or equally responsible being a virtual team member um, and how well we can utilize the technology to use, uh, engage the virtual team members as well. And from the exam perspective, you have covered these many, uh, these two areas from where the exam questions can come in in the future. Yeah. <clears throat> All right, so I would say that uh, we move to question answers here and we stop uh, the theory part and we continue the theory part uh, just like this in the later class as well. What do you think? Yeah, I think it is fine. And uh, most of the things uh, today we covered regarding 